right. So my name is Jay Steiner. I'm a historian and tour guide here at Vermilionville in Lafayette, Louisiana. And I'm in the schoolhouse right now. It's where I like to hang out a bit. Being a former teacher myself, it's interesting to look at the history of public education and other formal education here in South Louisiana. Now, one thing that's important to remember is that South Louisiana, yes, we're in the South, but speaking as personally as a Southerner who grew up in South Louisiana, it's a little different. So think of South Louisiana as the northernmost point of the Caribbean. This is essentially part of Latin America. And one of the things that, if we jump in that time machine and go back 100 years ago, would definitely make it feel a lot more or a lot less like what we think of as the American South was a huge language divide. So, not to mention across the whole country, around the beginning of the 20th century, about 45% of the country, English wasn't their first language. That was even higher in this part of the country. In southwest Louisiana, around this Cajun and Creole culture down here, you had French and Creole, Louisiana French and Louisiana Creole, which is sometimes called Curiveni. That made up the first languages of 65 to 80% of the population down here. And an overwhelming French-speaking, Creole-speaking majority here in South Louisiana. But as we know through history, just because you have a majority in some areas and majorities of languages or pluralities, a lot of times laws governing education, laws governing language, are often siding with the language, the culture, the philosophies of those people writing it. And in Louisiana, like nearly every state at that time, you had primarily Anglo-Americans, English-speaking Americans, making up a majority of your political majorities. So here in Louisiana, in 1916, the State Board of Ed decided that English was the only language allowed for public, ins public school instruction, which by then was becoming more and more compulsory, district by district. So not only do you have these you now new schools provided, which of course were not always equal because back then we had a rigid uh, system of racial discrimination, but it was becoming more available across the color line. But now they all had to follow suit with English only education. Now, of course, for many indigenous Americans, this is a process that was beginning decades before the 20th century with the boarding school programs, but this is when it reaches out to many other Americans, both sons and daughters of immigrants, but also groups here where their ancestors didn't come to the United States, the United States came to them. So <laughs> within three to four generations, you have a drop from around 80% Francophone and Creophone people down here to less than 10%, less than 5% in some cases. It's estimated today that in a population that once probably topped 100 or 200,000 Francophone and Creophone people, we have less than 20,000 people who speak Louisiana French and Creole French fluently here in Louisiana today. And unfortunately, this is not a Louisiana-only story. This is a story that happens across the U.S. We went from a country where one out of five people spoke German 100 years ago, and that went away. And the reason that matters to us today is because your language is part of your culture, and it's a keystone of culture. It's how you tell your story. And when you have to tell your history with someone else's words, you lose something in translation. And for those of us in the present to communicate with the past, having that divide there, that chasm, where we can't bridge it with a common language, we lose more and more connection. We can go look at all the primary sources we want, but even within our own lifetimes, I grew up with friends down here who had grandparents or great-grandparents who they weren't able to speak with them because they had that language divide because their great-grandparents would raise their children not to speak that language. And of course, that got passed through the years. And so they were made to feel ashamed of that. And like I said, this is something my friends who grew up in California had the same thing, same time period, just Spanish instead of French. So it's important for us now today to realize that that education that took that away is a tool just like anything else. We can think of a metaphor of a hammer. A hammer can tear down something, but it can also rebuild it. So today in Lafayette Parish, we have three schools for the last, we're actually celebrating our 30th year of language education here, and uh, our immersion education here in Lafayette Parish. Um, and we have three schools now that do 80% of their day, starting at kindergarten in French. We have two schools that do Spanish immersion and one that does Mandarin Chinese immersion. So we realize now, only because we've lost it, how precious that was. And so there are efforts happening today. And for the first time in over a century, you're having a population growing up now with not just access to it, but you have young children who are being raised by those very kids who came through French immersion, who are being raised in bilingual households. And it's a really amazing time to, to be around here because it kind of always reminds you that though you lose something and though you have that detachment from something, there's always hope you can bring it back. So 
it's a way, and for the and if you grew up in the idea of one brain, one language, very American idea, unfortunately, it's a chance for us to say that doesn't have to continue. My children can learn another language, and of course, I can do it myself. We have so many outlets to enrich our lives with different languages, and the moment you pick up even a little bit of a second or a third language, that gives you another set of eyes on the world, because every single word, every stroke of the pen, every movement of the hands with sign language, there's history and there's meaning and there's culture behind that, and you get to share that and take a piece of that for yourself. So, there we go.